Hi, I'm Travis from Ferntech and we're here at the field with the DJI Agris T50 and I'm just going to give you a brief showing of how to get everything ready to start a spot spray mission. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get to the field and we're going to set up our DRTK2 base station. We will go through this process quickly. The reason why we set this up first is we wanted to gather as many satellites as possible to be as accurate as possible. Because we're going to be flying the Mavic 3 multi-spectral to capture our imagery. Um, the quicker we get this up and ready, the quicker we can fly. So on the DRTK tripod, we've got a bubble on the top that we can line it up. Make sure it's nice and in the center. Cool, power it on. Now we just leave it. Let us start gathering satellites. So now that I've got my DRTK base station set up, I need a point of reference for the software, also known as a calibration point. And this is what the drone is gonna take off and land on. I need to have the vi this visible in my software. So it's a nice bright orange. I'll be able to see that easily. I just gotta make sure now that when I'm capturing my data, I've got that in my imagery. So like I said, we're gonna be using the Mavic 3 multi-spec. Um, you don't have to use this drone. There are a fair few drones that you can use. As long as you have a mapping drone, you can capture data to be able to create a mission in DJI Terra. So I've paired up with the Mavic 3 multi-spec to the controller. I'm going to set up a quick uh, mission here. So we're going to go flight routes, add, create routes. We want an area route. And there's our, there's our map. So now we're going to create our flight boundary. A little bit bigger than what I wanted. We can add in multiple points if we need to. I'm going to select that. And then it's the Mavic 3 series. And then it's the Mavic 3 multi-spec. We can choose between RGB and multi-spec or we can fly both. For this, the purpose of this flight, we don't need multi-spectral. Okay. Give it a name. TSD is a bit high. The first thing I'm going to change is this to AGL. It then unlocks my real-time terrain follow, which I'm going to select, and then my altitude. For spraying missions, I like to fly at about 50 odd meters, between 45 and 65. So I'll do 55 for this flight. Knock back the speed one, and then advanced settings. I'll leave my overlap. There's not a lot of detail needed here. And we're going to change timed interval shot to distance interval shot. The reason why I changed that is because a timed interval shot, if you get a gust of wind, a very strong gust of wind, it affects the time delay between each image. And sometimes it affects your imagery. Now that's obviously not something you want, especially when you're doing large blocks, 100, 100 plus hectares of mapping. So get into the habit, do distance interval shot straight off the bat. So we've got all this right, yes, we'll go into our drone set, main settings, we'll make sure our return to home height is not too high, max altitude 120, distance limit no, and last thing I want to do is check my RTK connection, which I am connected, I want to change that to DRTK. And that's connecting to the base that I set up in the beginning. Cool, update flight mission, upload, start, and off the drone goes. Nice. 
Right, so I've collected all my data. I've copied it across from the SD card onto my desktop. And now I'm going to do my mission planning. So, new mission. We're just going to do a standard visible light. And we're going to give it a name. It's going to be a spot spray mission. Okay, and up on the right here, we see a folder where we want to import our images. We'll go to our folder and search it. Now what that's going to do is it's going to bring it into the location on like a Google view and each white dot here is an image taken. We can turn that off if you want to. We'll leave it on. This is a very basic form of processing. All we're going to do is a 2D map, mapping scenario, when doing anything for agriculture we need to map, we need to process in either field or fruit tree. I'm going to use fruit tree and everything else pretty much stays the same. Start reconstruction, there's all my, a brief rundown of what I've selected, start processing. So I've given it a task by creating spots, I have given it an area to operate in and I've created a calibration point, points of reference. Generate 3D flight path. And there you can see the flight that it, the path that it's going to take. And I can actually have a 3D view to make sure that there's nothing in the way. If you're flying around a lot of trees, um, you can check if there are any branches that you may have missed or you might need to change your approach and how you go about getting to that point to spot spray. On the right here, heights above crops, two meters, a little bit low, two and a half to three meters, whatever you feel comfortable flying. Um, the right angle you don't need to worry about. Terrain follow accuracy, we'll just leave it as normal. And that's pretty much ready to be exported and put into the controller. Grab another empty SD card here quickly. Put your SD card in your card reader, stick it on the laptop or PC and all you're going to do here is export the file to the SD card. And that's our mission set up and ready to go. I'm going to prepare the Agris now for its first flight of the day. Basically what that means is I'm going to do all my pre-flight checks and make sure that everything is in order for a safe takeoff. There's nothing I should be worried about. And make sure all the props weren't damaged in transportation. Very easy to open up and lock all our arms. So what I'm checking for there is to see if the blades have any nicks on the leading and trailing edges. And by flexing it, I'll make any cracks visible. Just gonna check that the motors are turning as smooth as they should. Give the radar a bit of a shake, make sure it's nice and firm.
There's no obstacles or obstructions under the craft. Rear radar's tight, nice and firm. I'm plugged in, water lines are in, and now we can put some water in. But before we do that, we're going to put the battery in to cover the terminal so they don't get wet. We've got full battery. For the purpose of this demonstration I'm only going to be using water and also because our exposition only allows water. Now that I've done my pre-flight checks I can get into setting up my mission on the controller. First what we're going to do is go up to the folder and we're going to select micro SD and we're going to find the file inside here. We'll select it, we'll import it. I've already imported it. We'll go back, we're going to begin. We're going to change our mode here on the top left and we're going to go to fruit tree mode. And there you can see the reconstruction and the area. So I'm going to select that. I want to use it and you'll see the window pop up on the left. Before I take off, I need to make sure that I'm connected to RTK. There you can see it's connected. We're all good there. So application rate is per spot, how much it's gonna spray. For purpose of this video, I'm just gonna do one meter, one liter, my apologies. And then the flow rate, I'm gonna put it at max flow rate. Droplet size, I'll put it to fine because it looks better. Flight speed, I'll leave it as is. Heights above crops. Three meters is a good height. And then if I wanted to, I can do rotary spraying. Now, the calibration point that the drone is on, the little lollipop that I put over the landing pad, I need to rectify the offsets on the right over here. I'm gonna rectify, rectify, Yes, and I'm going to do it one more time to make sure. So I obviously put a bang on the spot. Now that that's all done, I'm ready to take off. I'm going to start, I'm going to do my pre-flight, 10 meter return to home, that's good. Auto return to home partially enabled, good, and here I go. And on the pause button, just in case anything happens. And that's a brief rundown of creating a spot spray mission with the DJI Agris. If you want any more details or need any pricing, give us a call or you can email us at Ferntech. Thank you.